justice for Maya and peace for her family. New developments in the search for Maya Miliete as her husband Larry is ordered to surrender his weapon. The big decision today on the placement of a sexually violent predator as neighbors make their voices heard. You know, as a black woman, I want to have a black child. A couple's fertility struggle shows the difficulty of finding minority egg donors. From bike to bendy, healing our bodies with some pineapple yoga. You're up with News 8. Always a great way to start the morning, right? Yeah. With a ah, good stretch. I, that's how I get it. Right when I get out of bed, I start stretching. Get good the blood stuff. flowing here. Oh, yeah. yeah. The aches and pains help. Yeah, it helps ease <laughs> that a little true. bit. Yeah. Uh, but yoga, bending or, or talking while standing in tree pose is pretty impressive. That, seriously. <laughs> she is quite the multitasker. Yeah. Very talented. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I hope you had a really nice weekend and uh, happy belated Mother's Day to all of you. But for some moms, still celebrating here today. Yes, we can still celebrate, of course. Today's Mother's Day in Mexico, so happy Mother's Day to all. Uh, let's get a check of that forecast on this Monday morning. Is it going to be a nice week ahead? Hi, Evan. Yeah, good morning. Hello. Yeah, it is uh, overcast starts of the morning, very similar to our weekend. Both Saturday and Sunday, we ran into those clouds through the morning hours, and then by the afternoon, plenty of sunshine. Another view that we've got from Black Mountain. Boy, how about this? You've got the sunrise in the background, and then notice this layer of clouds. That's the overcast uh, conditions that we've got to start off your Monday morning. So below those clouds is where most of us uh, reside. We're in those inland valleys along the coastline. And so we'll be under those clouds for a little bit of time, another about two or three hours before those clouds start to break apart and give us plenty of sunshine that is coming up over the tops of those mountains. We've got some AM clouds, temperatures warming out throughout the week, cooler by the time we get into the weekend. So it looks like this afternoon we'll rest mostly in the upper 60s, very mild out there, warming our way to the low 70s for Thursday and Friday. Jenny's checking in on what traffic looks like as we kick off the day. Hello. Hello and uh, welcome to the uh, work week at 602. I think Evan just told you the time, but I don't have much to say, so I'm just going to repeat what he said. Uh, here it is, South County, your travel times look fine. I know that giant banner is kind of blocking the 5 and 805, but you can see green across the board, even the Coronado Bridge, which just a few moments ago had a decent amount of volume. Uh, that has broken apart, so you're not going to face any issues there. Speaking of no issues, North County Drive, that looks pleasant as well. Jenny and Evan, thank you very much. And we are staying on top of a number of major developments this morning in the search for a missing Chula Vista mother, Maya Miliete. We're now learning about weapons confiscated from her husband. This comes after police served another search warrant at the couple's home. And News Age Chris Grove joining us live in Chula Vista with the latest on the investigation. And that search warrant uh, drew quite the crowd in that one neighborhood. Quite the crowd. A lot of people trying to see what was going to happen. Was this an arrest or was this just yet another search warrant being served? But real key here, it's what was taken from the home guns. And that's because there was a gun violence restraining order that was filed, approved by a judge. And you saw those officers carrying that out, seizing weapons from the home. In fact, take a look at this. This is an excerpt from that gun violence restraining order where, quote, uh, we find out that the respondent, being Larry, told officers that he knew they were coming for his firearms and he gave multiple firearms to his friends. Respondent refused to disclose the names of the people possessing respondent's firearms. Again, that according to the restraining order. Now, last Friday, officers could be seen leaving that home with what appears to be long guns and ammunition boxes. But according to the gun violence restraining order, it's believed that Larry may have owned as many as 20 firearms and 18 remain unaccounted for. But how did we get here to the point where more guns were being seized from the home? Well, back in January, police did take an illegal assault rifle and two other legal Glock handguns that were registered to Larry Miliete. But then officers discovered two additional handguns were purchased by Larry after officers served that first search warrant on his home back in January. That is what led police to seek the temporary restraining order. The judge ordered Larry Miliete to surrender all his guns. And on Friday, May 7th, Police serve that second search warrant at the home. We're just we're still conducting a search uh, with relationship to the search warrant. Um, we're going to be collecting evidence. And we have reached out to Larry multiple times in response to these latest developments, but so far we have not heard back. Eric Netta. Chris Crow reporting live. Thanks, Chris. Today the fight over the placement of a sexually violent predator in the East County is picking back up again.
This will be at the center of a hearing later this morning. And News 8's Allison Royal joining us live outside the Central Courthouse downtown, where again residents are planning to make their voices heard. Good morning, Allison. Good morning. Yeah, this is a familiar story. We were just out here at this central downtown courthouse on Union Street just a couple of weeks ago for a separate hearing for a different sexually violent predator that is scheduled to be placed in that exact same home in the Mount Helix area. Now, coming up later today, there's going to be a placement hearing for Merle Wakefield. He's 64 years old, and he's another convicted sexually violent predator. He was first convicted back in 1981, according to the DA, and then again in 1990. In 1998, the San Diego, San Diego Supreme Superior court system classified him as a sexually violent predator, which is why there are all these strings attached. He has been recommitted twice, once in 2000 and once in 2009. Now let's fast forward. Back last year in 2020, two doctors recommended that Wakefield be safely placed in a home in the San Diego County community. Of course, there have been complaints, especially from people who live over in the East County, since many of these sexually violent predators seem to always be placed in that general area of the county and that it's not proportionate to the population. Many ask why not be placed in North County, for example. The for-profit Liberty Healthcare oversees these types of sexually violent predators in our area and said it will monitor these predators thoroughly and continue their rehabilitative health care. So this 64-year-old Merrill Wakefield could go to that same home as Douglas Badger. If that name sounds familiar, you're right, because we covered his case just a couple of weeks ago. There was a hearing for him where neighbors could call into this Zoom hearing, and they all cited safety concerns, saying that there are multiple schools and preschools and daycare facilities in that Mountain Helix area. And they also talked about some other things that maybe you wouldn't expect, such as the downfall it could have on real estate prices in the pricey neighborhood. Some neighbors say that they're happy that they can express their voice and that they think that they're being heard, but others say that they worry that this will continue to happen in the East County neighborhood and that maybe five sexually violent predators could eventually be living in that home. I'm infuriated. My husband is, we work so hard to live in this neighborhood. I care about the city of El Cajon. And then that hearing is coming up at 9 o'clock this morning. But just before it at 8.30, a number of neighbors are expected to gather here and protest. So we'll keep an eye out for that for you. Back to you, too. Thank you, Allison. And a memorial continues to grow outside the Chula Vista home where two young boys were killed in a fire last week. Flowers, balloons, and toys now line the sidewalk. The fast-moving fire broke out just after midnight on Thursday. The boy's father, Jesus Suro, says he tried to save his sons but couldn't make it through the flames. According to a GoFundMe page, Suro suffered burns and smoke inhalation but is now out of the hospital. If you'd like to donate, we put a link at CBS8.com. Well, it was a violent weekend in America. The nonprofit group Gun Violence Archive is reporting at least 10 mass shootings across the country. In Colorado Springs, police are searching for a motive after a gunman killed six people at a birthday party before killing himself. It happened at a mobile home park just after midnight on Sunday. Police say the boyfriend of one of the victims barged in with a gun and started shooting. Multiple children were also present during the shooting. None of the kids were hurt. Turning now to the latest on the COVID-19 vaccine, eight high schools in the San Diego Unified School District will be offering vaccinations on campus this week. Now, Sharp is hosting these walk-in sites today. This is at Canyon Hills High School. They'll be at Kearney High tomorrow, and then on Wednesday at Claremont High. UC San Diego will then host the ones at Hoover, Crawford, and Lincoln High Schools today and tomorrow, and then at Morse and San Diego High on Wednesday and Thursday. And get this, these are walk-in clinics. They are open to anyone who's eligible. So 16 and up can get the Pfizer vaccine, but community members can also walk in to get their shots. The Sweetwater Union High School District also working on getting students vaccinated there. They're going to host events at Castle Park and East Lake High this week. Today, Governor Gavin Newsom expected to unveil his economic recovery plan, which he says will help California emerge from the pandemic even stronger than before. This event will be live streamed from the governor's Facebook, Twitter and YouTube pages. It starts at 10 this morning. Take a look outside here on a Monday to see how the forecast is looking. Looks nice there. Yeah, it looks great outside. We are starting off the day with mostly overcast skies. It's kind of the trend with onshore flow over the last several mornings. Your Mother's Day, even on Saturday, we ran into those clouds through the morning hours, and then they clear out pretty quickly by the afternoon. So running into that trend yet again. Temperatures as we start off the day are mild, upper 50s and low 60s. 61 for Oceanside, 59 for Carlsbad, and 62 right now in San Diego. As you move farther inland, we're in the same range upper 50s for the most part, some mid 50 degree temperatures in Alpine, for example. 
Also in Ramona, some pockets of colder air, but the next several days we're on that warming trend, making it to the low 70s by Thursday. The important thing to, to recognize in this is that these temperatures are not warming all that much. So although we will be in the upper 60s this afternoon, we're going to make our way to only 70 for tomorrow, 71, 72. So every day we're staying within about five degrees of average, which is 69 degrees for that forecast high. Overnight lows are roughly in line as well. Mid and upper 50 degrees is what we're looking at. Uh, forecast for the day across your four different regions. We've got your coastline in the upper 60s, inland valleys, low 70s. Low 70s apply as well to the mountains. However, they won't encounter quite as much cloud cover. They are mainly above those clouds right now. 93 for your deserts with plenty of sunshine in the mix. Another view that we've got outside from Mount Woodson shows that it is an overcast start to the day, but we are going to allow for those clouds to break apart pretty quickly into the next uh, about two or three hours. Still a very pleasant morning. Uh, you can head outside. Winds are relatively calm. No watches, warnings, or advisories currently in effect. I'll send things over to Jenny who is checking in on what traffic looks like to start off our Monday. Really quiet out there. I'll start you off with the North County uh, where I don't see any major issues. There's a little bit of ongoing construction on the 70s. Eight, so heading through the Lake San Marcos area, but I don't see any backups there. Middle of the county looks good. Even the Coronado Bridge, very nice and light. No major crashes reported. Jenny, thank you very much. Still ahead, how a cyber attack could impact gas prices, plus this. It was a hurdle that I hadn't even thought about. How one couple's infertility struggle is shedding light on the lack of minority egg donors.